Hello and welcome to Ask BR. Today we're going to be talking about Arjun Reddy and Kabir Singh. I haven't seen Kabir Singh yet, but the film, the discussion is not about that exactly. It's more about the issues uh, in the two films and what they do right and what they don't do right and all these things. So let's start with a question sent on Instagram by I am Shankar 93. Arjun Reddy and Kabir Singh, in my opinion, are exceptionally flawed men, but don't flawed men deserve stories? I mean, we have lauded American Psycho, the Silver Raghavan films and so on and so forth. But I have watched Arjun Reddy and all along I couldn't get why Preeti kept going back to him. But reality is that such that there are men like that and there are women like Preeti. I have personally seen many Arjun Reddys in life doing crazy things in college. By establishing a moral code of conduct, aren't we unrealistically reflecting the society that we live in? Actually, by establishing a moral code of... Uh, I think what we're trying to do is trying to reflect the kind of society that we would like to live in. So yes, there is a certain uh, you know, value in talking about what should be done as opposed to what is done. Uh, and, but I agree with the larger point of, of, uh, of, you know, there are people like this because I remember when I, one of the, I don't know, two and a half people that like Carter Valley, right? So when I said that I did not have a problem with the central romance and the fact that people kept asking me, but why is this girl going repeatedly going back to him and you know why doesn't she just you know snap out of the relationship and all that but i have seen uh friends of mine uh educated people guys and girls and you know it comes happens both sides uh, you know you they're, they're well educated they're you know middle class upper middle class uh, they should know better but they don't and and you know if it's for various reasons one of them said it was fe fear that he would not find another person so we don't know what exactly goes on in people's minds when they do these things but these things happen and i think you know it's it's interesting as personalities uh, to put them up on screen because i think for a long time we've had very idealistic characters on screen and i think you know finally we're getting to a place where we show not flawed as in like you know like we've had flawed characters like in like you know people are psychopaths murderers all those kinds of things but people who are like us like who could be the boy next door or the girl next door or whatever like that but still very very screwed up and messy i think uh, that's interesting to see on screen though of course it all depends on the treatment and how the film is written and all those kinds of things but yeah i think they deserve their own films but the glorifying is also due to this fact which i'm going to uh, the, the accusation of glorifying is also due to this fact and I'm going to read out a comment by Sharath N again came from Instagram. I'm very conflicted about this. For example, take Sigapuro Jakal and Pudupetta. We know that you know, Kamal is a psychotic uh, serial killer and Koki Kumar is a gangster whose greed for power consumes him. We know that they are very horrible men. But Kamal Hassan's and Dhanush's respective performances are so exhilarating to watch that we may even end up rooting for them. But is that necessarily glorifying them? So the director's success in... Uh, Arjun Reddy, when I, wrote, when I saw the film, this is what I wrote, is in rendering Arjun sympathetic. Part of it is simply the gaze we are used to in mainstream cinema. We are conditioned to root for the protagonist, the hero. That's, that's how we are conditioned. So we know that the people in Ocean's Eleven are doing bad things, but because they're played by George Clooney and Brad Pitt, we side with them. We want them to do the immoral thing and get away with it. That is the way cinema works. So... Uh, it helps that unlike the Devdas figure here, Arjun is no loser. He's, he's actually good at his job. He's good in his studies and all those kinds of things. So there's maybe a little bit of an alleviating circumstance that makes us like him a little bit more. But then at least some of us identify so much with the characters simply because they are played by very charismatic actors. Now I'm going to give the example of Marlon Brando. He played a very, very troubling character in a streetcar named Desire, Stanley Kowalski. But because he's Brando, because of that stellar breakdown at the end, you forgive everything that he does earlier. I mean, here's a man who's raped his sister-in-law and he gets away with practically nothing. And the woman is carted away to an asylum kind of thing. So that's how movies condition us because of the charisma of the actors, of the leading men. Uh, so I'll tell you, I, the closest example I can give to uh, Arjun Reddy in that sense of the problems being kind of alleviated by the actor is uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Because there also, the punishment isn't what is commensurate with the crime, right? It's like, it's, uh, he cooperates with the cops at the end and he gets a very reduced sentence and he continues you know, his life as something else. And now this again was criticized because uh, the, you know, uh, Peter Bradshaw on The Guardian, he called it the smugly narrated POV of the self-made man himself. 
and the victims of his pump and dump schemes many of them ordinary working class people postmen always postmen remain as absent from the screen as they were from this man's vile mind now this is exactly the kind of criticism one of the criticisms against uh, Arjun Reddy and Kabir Singh is that we we see it only from the POV of the guy and we don't see her much the girl much because she's the victim of all his of his things but yet another publication the new yorker gave the film a grave review you know this issue did not bother them that much so i think the issue of glorification is again something that we sense like how much of it is it's the balance is something that we need to figure out for ourselves but there is no denying the fact that having a charismatic actor at the center or a big star at the center playing such a character lends it a certain level of legitimacy that we might not give the character had it been played by a character actor that we did not know or somebody very ordinary looking so we would probably be much more clued into the character without the glamour of the charisma of the uh, of the actor bhargav sends on instagram do you think it should be viewed as just a movie about a certain flawed character who's wrong in every step rather than a commentary about philosophies it contains at the end of the day we see so many toxic relationships around us all that kind of stuff see but i'll tell you what in the the way we respond to films is dependent a lot on what how we approach uh, some of a background and other kind of things now i for instance view a film as only a film like i like to look at the characters the situation and things like that uh, to a large extent but there are some people who look at it as to use your word they look at it from the philosophy of the film because uh, something they will look at it from a larger aspect and what is the film trying to espouse and that kind of stuff so i mean of course everybody incorporates a lot of everything into their reviews but what i'm trying to say is that some aspects might interest a review more, reviewer more than the other ones and i think what you're seeing is largely that i think people are who are responding to that because there have been other people who've liked this movie and who've written well about kabir singh and have written nice things about it but there have also been these very severely critical reviews so between the two of them i think you just kind of uh, i've always maintained that reviews show as much about the person doing the reviewing as the film being reviewed so that is why these conflicts are coming and these some of them are picking up on these philosophies shweta vishwanathan says i feel the audience are looking forward to too much idealism in cinema which curbs the creative freedom why can't a flawed whatever whatever it's a story about such a character being an independent filmmaker and a woman who strongly believes in equality i loved arjun reddy i feel it's about a man who comes to terms with the suffering and flaws in his own way it was shocking that kabir singh wasn't lapped up actually it was lapped up by it is being lapped up by the audience if the issue was with misogyny why hasn't the bollywood's item numbers been looked down this harshly again a lot of articles have been written about item numbers and how they uh, you know reduce uh, objectify women i somehow feel that there exists a glass ceiling when south cinema directors try to make it in bollywood i don't think that's it i don't uh, because you know you, uh, you've seen bahubali be doing very very well so i don't think it's a matter of south cinema's uh, directors being uh you know the glass ceiling or something like that i don't know if that's true but the key in your thing is why can't a flawed I, I the flawed there is no doubt that this man is flawed you know this guy is this is the story of a very entitled there's no other word for him but asshole he is an asshole throughout and throughout you know almost for a large part of the movie till he gets into his redemption arc early on you know arjun's mother a grandmother tells a story about how he lost a toy as a child and uh, he uh, the 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 dialogue there is how he ate and slept in grief uh, not much has changed after he grew up because even now arjun treats preeti like a toy he literally imposes himself uh, on her and uh, when he loses her he gets into a lot of self pity because like he's lost his favorite toy so in a typical telugu or tamil film this is where it comes from right in a typical telugu or tamil film the obsessive stalkery stuff in the first half would be portrayed as cute or fun or something like that uh, but the tone of arjun reddy is different it's like it's a, this complicated flawed character rather than somebody who's just doing all these things and then getting the girl without any complications he's just like coolly going through life doing this talking thing or whatever it is but that's not it is and even the fight that he gets through gets into to protect his woman is not later we realize it's not so much about like what a cool guy he is what a badass he is it's about his anger management issues you know that also has a role to play and even the sleeping around and all that i didn't see the sleeping around as oh i'm so cool i'm sleeping with everybody else i saw a guy so empty that he was trying to fill up the 
the the whole in his space or in his being with a lot of meaningless um you know sex that's what i saw so yeah that flaw is something that that i don't know strikes some of us as what this character is he's a very flawed guy and he's not somebody that we should aspire to be but rather look at him and say oh look this is the guy on screen and these are the things that he does and you either feel for it or you don't buy it at all and i think a lot of people uh you know reviewers just didn't buy it and you know that's what happened do you think uh on twitter i got this question from rahul b raj do you think arjun reddy wasn't thrashed as much as kabir singh because of the normalization of the macho male heroes in the south compared to that in hindi cinema i think hindi cinema has its fair share but yes there is a difference that happens when something here goes there like uh, o kadal kanmani was a very new concept for tamil cinema because you know it, it was this live in and all that kind of stuff but when it went to hindi as okay janu it just bombed it i don't i don't think it did well at all because that story is not a new story for bombay because they've had salam namaste come in i don't know 2003 or 4 or something like that which is pretty much the same story so similarly when a kabir singh kind of story goes there i think it's a different kind of situation because i've always said this that the way we respond to movies a lot of the conditioning and conditioning also means the kind of tamil and telugu movies that we used to watching so of course when you watch a movie your your brain goes on to i'm watching a telugu movie or i'm watching a tamil movie so your kind of all your your normalization patterns align around that so we by not praise a hindi film hero for doing something let's say something very positive towards women it would just seem normal but when a tamil film hero does it it assumes a extra bit of importance simply because in tamil films and telugu films typically this is not the normal behavior so we suddenly say oh wow this guy actually does this so the way yes language the and the cultures definitely play an importance in the way films are received or as you say thrashed so two questions from twitter kind of down around the same issue rakesh from movie streak says there are subtle hints when the hero says it all started when the girl had eye contact and only then did he kind of get the idea that she was interested in him that the, and she the girl slaps the guy when there's a disagreement so and uh, so he's kind of saying that she made the first move she made the first kiss she made the first uh, you know sex move and things like that so he's saying why do we he's pointing out the strong points of the girl and uh, cm aranganathan says can you please share if you think bala sethu was better than arjun reddy kabir singh because i think it's pretty much the same story except the hero's not insufferable and the ending was unhappy actually i think that's a far more problematic film uh, that's a film that bothered me a lot rather than arjun reddy uh, kabir singh because there was a huge uh, kind of power equation that i could not justify because the hero is the stud of college and things like that and the heroine is from this very timid brahmin family and she's literally cowering at the sight of him which preeti is not doing in arjun reddy you know she's not she may not be speaking but she's not like cowering at the sight of him and i think this bala's film is much more even though it's an affecting film you're showing some kind of thing that that's more like a guy wearing a woman down whereas here i don't get that feeling so i think that's that's kind of a little more problematic than this film anurag rao says do you think giving the female character some weight to explaining her side of the story as well would have made arjun reddy and kabir singh less of a misogynist i feel preeti being a mute victim of tantrums unsettling and make the guy look more devilish so i'm going to explain how i see preeti's character right yes arjun reddy uh, i don't know about kabir singh but arjun reddy does not give us a solid reason for uh, why she falls in love and all we can do is speculate based on her background and things like that but even when he draws that anatomy lessons lessons on her she doesn't go and scrub it away in disgust or something like that you know she shows her hand to a friend like a trophy you know these are the small things that we have to pick up and see how does she react to his torment that's why i'm saying unlike bala where she is literally like you know leave me alone leave me alone this is like a woman who after this man plants himself on her lap without her consent problem area but she asks her friend for a blanket and says she covers him up with him uh, she should be shrieking for help and that's when i kind of decided both of them are equal not cases and both of them really deserve each other and that's kind of you know how this movie is going to work for me because they're both this crazy as love people and and you know there's no point in justifying these kinds of things because they're both going to go after each other but like in the scene where uh, arjun mentions at one point like one this uh, somebody said that that she picked him all the other new guys were shy and wouldn't engage in eye contact but she turned and looked at him and that's when he kind of knew and uh, she's the one who kisses first she's the one who uh, initiates sex she's even the one who comes for the first visit after he's moved away beginning the long distance relationship so she does have agency it's just that 
she doesn't talk much. She doesn't speak as much as he do. He does. It might have been problematic if Arjun was the one doing all the slapping, but then she does the slapping as well. She wants at the bus stand. You see, uh, he slaps. She slaps him for shouting at her and things like that. And he immediately apologizes. He's smiling and he apologizes. I think also the fact that she comes from a family that is so dominating uh, kind of has done something with her. So she kind of, you know, doesn't really know how to be around with dominating people, and she's kind of. But when something happens with Arjun and he liberates her and I think if she finally finds it in herself to do all the things that she does when she goes back to her family. But this is in no way justified by the film. This is just a little backstory that built, you know, in your mind and for things that you don't have too much of a problem of. And this is the backstory that I built for myself. Rishita on Insta asks, although some critics liked Arjun Reddy, some question certain scenes such as that of Arjun choosing Preeti's friends and also that of Arjun randomly creasing Preeti. Do you think the remake would have given the space for the director to change these scenes? Do you think it is well received in Telugu compared to Bollywood because misogyny is normalized in Telugu cinemas? More example, item songs and way less space for actresses. Probably that's an answer. We talked about this a little before, but here I'm going to talk about some things about Arjun Reddy where he doesn't treat all women like sexual objects. You know, he is his nurses are more maternal figures. He treats them as equals. Uh, he's not treating them like sexual objects. Uh, and the women he tries to have sex with or he has sex with, he's very open about the fact that he's only interested in sex. He doesn't want, he's not telling them that he loves them and then cheating them or something like that. He's very straight about what he wants. So that the very disturbing scene earlier where he wants a fat chick as uh, uh, Preeti's friend, because I think that's at that point his immaturity whereas later when he defends uh, when uh, there's this other person who's objectifying women who are uh, uh, on the flight you know and and he says you know Arjun Reddy gives a big thing about how you should not objectify women I think that shows his growth uh, because he slowly kind of this thing about Preeti has kind of slowly changed so initially he starts out like a like a grade A asshole and slowly if the word is allowed de assholifies throughout the movie you know that's what happens he kind of de assolifies and then slowly experiences this huge uh, uh, you know uh, thing where he undergoes a lot of introspection and then we get the final scene and we'll talk about that but for me the one of the big things of this film uh, about what for a man of his background uh, a guy like him to kind of say that he will accept the child even if it is her husband's because he wants her shows a big deal about how much he's evolved or rather that kind of person has evolved uh, because you know it may be very insignificant in terms of when you talk about it in terms of very liberated people and all that but this is not that guy and for him to say that it means a lot do i wish that the child had actually been a husband's and he had accepted it i really wish that had been the case i wish it had not been a cop out but i guess you know baby steps is what we'll have to take in this kind of case in telugu cinema so i'm i'm just saying so renju uma maheshwari says on facebook uh, i didn't feel this movie is about promoting misogyny unlike most of the movies the misogynistic protagonist are worshiped here misogyny is depicted without any whitewash he loses his love owing to his ego where as his friend so another thing for the past eight months, he's, she's been waiting for him. She left her house. She made a lot of choices herself. Now, the point is that at some point, she got fed up with the way that he was treating and said, fuck you, I'm just going to get married to this other guy because you won't wait for me. But after marrying that guy, she kind of said that, okay, you know what? I did this too, like, because I had to do it, but now I can't be with this person anymore. I don't want to screw up his life. And she moved out almost immediately. So that is in a way showing that that her feelings towards him had deepened too. So I'm saying that the fact that that has happened to me says that it was a, at that point a, a, a mutual thing. And like a lot of the earlier points that I've said, I didn't feel it was, there were misogynistic events, but I don't really think this movie is promoting misogyny um, as such. Rishita 98 says, do you also feel that Arjun Reddy is rather glorifying toxic masculinity more than portraying it since Preeti does end up going back to him in a five minute conversation there's barely any repercussions for his toxic behavior. So again, I'm going back to that Wolf of Wall Street example. You know, we don't see the repercussions of this man's behavior on the people that he swindled. So yes, if that is a problem for you, then that is a problem. Uh, if you are able to overlook it and look at it as a story, then that's how you will see the film. He wasn't punished by her though, but he punished himself. 
he punished himself he lost his career he ruined his career he ruined his friendships he ruined his relationships uh, you know with the, he had a lot of messed up things and i think instead of behaving like a mature individual he just behaved like a spoiled child and the whole film is about how he had to let go of all these things and attain some level of maturity in the end to the extent that he can say to this woman that i will accept you i want you i don't care if it's somebody else's child growing in your stomach so i think that's the art that we are seeing from this completely childlike toy craving boy to this man who can accept this girl regardless of whoever was made up pregnant or whatever it is because that's the that's the thing because he doesn't care he only wants her he understands her finally and he wants her so that's what i, I saw vicky verma says in twitter to south audience arjun reddy is a new experience after watching the lord ram kind of heroes it's per, it's nice to see a hero who has both ram and ravan into him actually that's that's a nice point because you if you don't notice the title arjun reddy reddy is you know it, it adds more power to the hero because it's a forward community uh, you know it's he's, he's not just impulsive and self destructive and sadistic and charming and all these things he's also upper class and upper caste so the entire film is told from his point of view so the amount of entitlement that this person has is huge and caste in in typical southern movies is usually associated with a certain level of pride that's when you bring in caste caste pride but this is a man who who is shown almost throughout in a weaker situation you know he is not the kind of person who brings glory to his caste so in a weird way i don't feel that this is one of those movies like like you know how they talk about devar magan or chinna counter as glorifying a caste here i actually think that caste name helps to kind of bring him down a little more because he may be upper class or upper caste or whatever it is but by his dickish behavior and what he's doing i think he's kind of it balances out that heroness that that cast uh, thing brings around that worked for me as well rakesh movie freak says on twitter that after a long time came across a movie where the camera does not zoom in a woman's body where girls only aim is to get in the arms of a guy strong enough to be on her own leaving aggressive boyfriend family etc one of the things that i really liked about the movie is that the 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 situation that happened around her marriage because she's like she forgets all her things and she she kind of you know she goes after him she tells her parents they were making love for so many days and all these kinds of things and she's almost enjoying that and then she goes out to them and then when he kind of is unavailable she comes and says well screw you i'm just going to go and do whatever it is that impulsiveness that's what i'm saying they're both fruit cakes they're both not 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 pieces you know they're like they're not really they're both so much into this that they're not doing rational logical things krishikesha hebar says on twitter do you feel that realization that the character has in the end feels real i didn't buy it Uh, even in the end he keeps uh, he keeps adi na pilla if i go and ask her she will come back but there is no consideration for her opinion but i think again she is given that sign so i think i think that there is a logic or rationale for him doing that and i think that there are certain times when you approach uh, a something hoping that something will happen and if she had said no that's when we would have said you know he's not giving her opinion because at this point if he doesn't even ask her how does he know what her opinion is or what she's thinking so that's i think a valid thing in facebook sai madhav batula says arjun is a character designed for the audience to empathize with him but not get inspired uh, you know he pleaded he's a moral guy he pleaded guilty for diagnosing the patient when he's drunk why can't few people look at it this way and on twitter niranjana selvam says where should the audience draw ideally draw the line bet- uh, watching a movie as a story brought to life versus real life because do i think the movie is convincing and did it have me involved yes but do i agree with the ideologies no so again that's the question we've talked about but for that you see this these two questions i don't mind realistic portrayal of characters that we come across but where the multiplex audience the urban areas were mostly literate but it also has a widespread reach to bc center audience we need to keep in mind the impact it might have on impressionable young minds and uh, michelle mary bernardine again on twitter she says should a film like this be made uh for a younger mass audience have some moral compass especially in the tone the director uses to portray his characters i understand the argument that it's art and it's the audience's responsibility to, re- to differentiate right from wrong but isn't this also a more impressionable demographic that can easily seek to emulate now i don't know because see there have been lots of studies that have been done and i'm with the earlier person who said shouldn't we be able to distinguish a movie from real life and is everything that we do in the movies uh you know something that we do in real life uh and if two people do something based on a movie does it mean the movie doesn't have a right to exist or does it mean that those people two people don't have the sense to differentiate between movies and real life these are questions that have been going on forever so that is why even in the wolf of wall street we saw 
there were one people, one set of people that were able to embrace the contradictions of the movie and love it entirely, whereas there were the other people who said, this is a movie that glorifies all these bad things and therefore it, it has a problem. I really think this has to be, but where I will say this is this, I am in no place to judge who is likely to be influenced or not influenced because I disagree with the fact that some the mass centers is going to be influenced and the urban centers are hugely evolved people who will not be uh, influenced or the fact that the younger audiences are going to be influenced whereas the older audiences are mature and therefore they will not be influenced. I don't agree with that. If the influence is going to happen, it's going to happen based on somebody's personality and not necessarily whether because they're rural or urban or you know younger or older or whatever it is. That's what I believe. Finally, a few questions. Uh, Kalyan Aditya says, Selva sir said he'll be socially conscious while remaking 7G Rainbow Colony. In Kabir Singh, do you think the director should have avoided remaking some scenes like the one in which Shahid Chris is Preeti? Again, it depends on the individual. Yeah, It's like uh, they make the film that they want to make and uh, we review it the way we see it and call it out or accept it or whatever it is. So, I mean, I we really cannot be expecting people to make the movies that we want them to make, right? I mean, uh, otherwise, it would be such an ideal world. Anantan asks on Twitter, people start to engage with the theme and premises rather than the characters and the filmmaking. This is the phenomenon these days and is that the reason for all these stuff? Does a well-made cinema need to be radical? Again, it's how people view the films here. Yeah? It's like if your characters and uh, the filmmaking engage you, that's different. But then the theme is also important to a lot of people because some, some people look at it through an ideological lens and that's, that's fine because we need everyone to look at a film through all different angles and build like a wall of opinions around the film and not just you know say that uh, you know somebody's right or wrong versatile vivek sagar says doesn't matter how some low iq reviewers think people are loving it movies already a hit win-win for audience distributors reviewers don't matter well you're right reviewers don't matter at all because there, there has never been a reviewer who made a mass film a hit i think uh, i think reviewers are more about uh, trying to build opinions around a film and take conversations forward uh, but I do agree that these conversations don't really get to where they need to go because a lot of them really preach to the converted and uh, you know the conversation is often had in a among people of similar backgrounds and I think the real impact happens when these conversations percolate down and there's a real dialogue across you know let's see how uh, the Hindi belt perceives it as how Mumbai perceives it or how Chennai perceives it or something like that so then you really get a lot of uh, you know, otherwise it's it's very similar sounding opinions everywhere and uh, I think that's really of no use. But opinions are what reviews are for, not the box office. So that's the end of this episode of Ask VR. Thank you for asking these questions. Uh, see you in the next episode. Until then, keep watching Film Companion South.